Wilkeman, Bienvenue and Croissier to part one of my mini-series on Holy Grail time-lapse. If you're unfamiliar with the term, it means capturing a full time-lapse sequence from sunset into night, then back into sunrise. It's difficult to achieve due to the massive changes in exposure. Depending on what camera mode or exposure metering you're using, you may see results in your time lapses that have step changes or even random changes in exposure. In this video, I'll be covering the gear I use and how I power it. The other subjects I'll cover throughout the rest of the series include setup and composition, focusing, camera settings, time-lapse settings, and post-processing. Hopefully resulting in a beautiful time-lapse. First things first, equipment. I bought a second-hand Sony A7S for my recent trip to the Dolomites. I picked it up for a measly £550. I know it's a couple of generations old, but it's still way up on the sensor performance rankings on DxO Mark. It is especially good in low light conditions due to it being full frame with 12 megapixels. The large pixel to sensor ratio means bigger pixels to collect more light. Plus the Sony Exmor sensor design is excellent for dynamic range. So I'm expecting it to produce good clean nighttime images without much noise. To actually shoot the time-lapse, I'll be using an app downloaded from the Play Store, imaginatively called Time-lapse. I've heard tell that it is excellent at managing the changes in exposure over time. This is as much a series on time-lapse as it is a test to see whether the A7S is still relevant in 2020. So for the lens, ideally you want to stick a decent fast piece of glass in front of your camera. For this mini-series and for the video, I use my trusty Samyang 14mm f2.8 manual. In order to capture a decent night sky and subjects such as the Milky Way, I would recommend an aperture of f2.8 or faster. You also want to be in manual focus mode, so make sure that your lens supports this. In terms of focal length, it depends on the foreground subject, night sky interest and composition, which I will cover in part two. Obviously, you want a decent, sturdy tripod. You don't want your camera to be moving throughout the night, so make sure you just got one of those. And the last, absolutely essential piece of kit you want is a lens warmer. You do not want to watch back your results in the morning and find that the lens is fogged up in the early hours. Honestly. Just buy one of these, 15 pounds on Amazon. I will put a link in the description. You need it. Okay, so optional equipment. I used a motorized camera rail. In particular, a newer motorized carbon fiber 80 centimeter rail, which I picked up from Amazon. I had started to make my own DIY rail, but I ran out of time before my holiday. But I'll get back to that in a future DIY project video. I can get sideways and panning motion, which adds an extra cinematic effect. I'll cover all of that in part two. Two. You could also use another motion device like um, the Serp Genie or my Star Adventurer Mini Star Tracker. Has a function for time lapse in when mounted upright on a tripod. This bit can pan around at a certain amount of degrees per hour and um, you get that panning motion. Okay, I'm going to assume that you haven't derived magical powers from Castle Grayskull, or like wear really tight wide fronts and ride a large cat. If that's the case, then you're going to need to look at alternative ways of powering your gear. In order to give your time lapse the best chance of succeeding, you do not want to be changing batteries or any settings for that matter mid shoot. Camera batteries are probably not going to last the 12 to 13 hours required to go from day to night and back to day again. 
It is key that you run tests at home. I can't stress this enough. If something runs out of juice halfway through the shoot, you're gonna get pissed. Especially if you just lumped all your gear up a mountain, it's 2 a.m. and you're freezing your nips off. I have three things to power up. In my setup, I have the rail, the camera, and the lens warmer, for which I use high capacity USB power packs like the ones you use for your phone. The newer rail uses an MPF style battery that would give me around three to four hours, but luckily I can substitute that with a USB cable and power pack. The lens warmer is also USB powered. Lastly, the A7S needed a battery adapter, a sort of dummy battery with a USB connection so I could hook it up to a power bank. I'll put some links in the description below in case you're interested. To help, you can also do some calculations. For example, I know that my lens warmer uses about 1.4 amps of current. I found this out by looking on Amazon. I use a 10,000 milliamp hour power pack for the lens warmer, which when converted to amp hours, you divide by 1,000, and thus 10 amp hours. To work out how long the power pack will last, simply divide the amp hours by the device's current in amps. So 10 divided by 1.4 gives my lens warmer about seven hours of loving warmth, keeping my lens fog free. I know that doesn't last for the whole 12 to 13 hours I was shooting, but I just plugged it in when the temperature dropped, which was just after astronomical twilight. Uh, I've set up my rail behind me. I've got the A7S on. I'm gonna try my first proper day to night time lapse. Um, the problem is I've got this newer um, 80 centimeter carbon fiber rail and um, it has a dodgy app on it. Um, very hard to use. Might do a video on that at some point. And I've set it for an interval of 35 seconds. Um, and what I want to do is use the time-lapse app that um, comes with the A7S, because apparently that is really good at going from day to night to day and managing the exposures across all of the, uh, all of the, all of the photos that it takes. Um, so I've got two different intervals. They're both set at 35 seconds, but somehow they seem to be out of sync. Who knows, we'll have to see in the next seven hours whether it's worked properly or not. Um, but the Milky Way should be coming up just above the church and then moving over towards the right, at which point it will probably be cold and we'll go home and have a cup of tea. But we'll see how it goes. Okay, so I just wanted to make another couple of points about what I'm trying to set up here. And the fact that I'm trying to do this over a number of hours, I think I've got this set up for about seven hours in total, um, which means the batteries that come with the rail only last around about three to six hours. So what I'm doing is I've got multiple battery packs, power packs, USB ones hooked up to everything. So I'll just swing around and give you a little look right now. So you can see here I've got battery pack hooked up to the A7S um, and that's powering the camera for a long time because the, the batteries in these are quite small and I don't want to be switching those around. Um, I've got a second battery pack hanging off here. This is a 26,800 milliamp hour one which is powering the rail. And then I've got a smaller 10,000 milliamp one which when it gets a little bit colder later you can see I've already got a lens warmer on um, so I'll plug that in, warm up the lens, and hopefully that won't frost up when it gets a little bit colder later. We have this running for another five hours. So it's time, well, I've got a brew up there. This is now making a cup of coffee. And I'm watching the football. Okay, so that is it for part one. Next up is, well, part two, where I'll be talking about composition, focusing, time-lapse settings, and camera settings. If you found this useful and just can't bear to miss the rest of this, I assume to be soon award-winning mini-series, then please just like and subscribe. Until next time, photo geeks, take it easy.